<laughs> Welcome, guys. It's another episode of the Neutral Corner. It's Danny Glover. It's Big Lex, and it's proudly sponsored by Treasure Boxing Club. And today we got none other than the former British, European, and WBU light middleweight champion Wayne Alexander the Great. Welcome, guys. It's another episode of the Neutral. Hello guys, Whoa. thank you for having me. Look, I'm still yeah, only Danny. clapping by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't clap, man. I don't clap. It's, you know. it's about time, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. yeah, been hey, been trying to get you on for a while, man. You've been ducking and dodging me like like your prime days, eh? What's that saying? All be- good things. Better late than never. <laughs> oh, all good things. Come to those who wait, yeah. <laughs> but like something like that, you get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so thank you for having me, man. Um, we go back a long way. A long way. So, a long way. I'm um, very glad. Um, a long way for me because I used to watch you on TV and you know look up to you and see you on you know Sky Sports and them things there, yeah. and um, yeah. And then when I finally, well, f- yeah, we'll go, we'll get into all that <laughs> stuff and stuff where, yeah, where I first met you properly and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it's just for people to get to know maybe more about you if they haven't been familiar because we have <clears> a lot of you know some younger fans, but also yeah. you know some. Um, more mature fans as well, so they can know either a bit more about you or familiarise themselves with you. So we like to get the full story, real in depth, you know. So we like to start from the beginning and take it back to, um, yeah, like your formative years and stuff like that. So like, where did you grow up? What, yeah, what um, what area did you grow up? Where's your parents from and stuff like that? Okay, okay. Well, early years. Yeah, man. um, I was born in Tootin, Mm. St. George's Hospital. Mm. July 17th, 1973. Okay. To my, my parents, Vincent and Violet Alexander. Mm-hmm. Both born in Jamaica. My mum was from St. St. James and dad was from St. Anne's. Okay. Yeah, um, but Marley's parish. Yeah, mm. my, my, my nan, my nan, my nanny, she's, um, she's from St. Anne's. She's okay. from Cave Valley. Okay, my mm. dad's from what town? Okay. Near, near Brown Town. Oh yeah, yeah. I know Brown Town. Yeah. That's more near the... The beach side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the biggest. It's the biggest um, county in Jamaica. Yeah, St. Anne's is. Um, yeah, and then Dunn's River. Yeah. So where's the West Moreland? Because I know you go there. West Moreland is more. It's more like no, but, west. No, but is that where your mum's from? No, then? she's not. She's from um, St. James. Um, okay. Mo Bay, Montego Bay. Okay. Yeah. So what's your connection to West Moreland? Why you go there a lot? I say Elizabeth. Yeah, St. Elizabeth. Yeah. Who, what, who's from what. there? My mum and dad lived there. Up until a couple of years ago. Oh, okay, you know, okay. So there was born into Anderson James, came here in, in the sixties. Mm-hmm. Met up, had me and my sister. They worked here all their life. Um, retired fifteen years ago to St Elizabeth. Do you know oh. That's where they lived for the for the last um, five ten years. So talking oh. about that passed away, but we we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, St Bess, they call it. Okay. Brown country. Yeah. Plenty of brown people there. Yeah. 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 Um, so where did you go um, school then? Anyway, yes, going back to where I was born in Tooting, um, I lived there till I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to Croydon when I was, yeah, when I was eight. So um, I went to Hillbrook Primary School yes. in Tooting. Mm. Yeah, from the age of four until eight. And then we moved to Croydon and um, I went to Gonville Primary School. Where's that? In, in Croydon. Okay. Yeah, in Croydon. Um, I was there from the age of eight until 11. Mm-hmm. And then moved to Lanfranc Senior School. Okay. 11 to 15. Okay. So how was it growing up in... So how old was you... When did you move from Tooting? How old was you? Eight. I was eight. eight. Yeah, I was okay. eight. So how... Do you remember the, like life around Tooting? What was it like? Not, not a great deal. I mean, you know... Certain bits, but no, not a great deal. I didn't really, I didn't really venture out or go out on my own. So, um, you know, I can remember, remember, um, I remember one thing that made me laugh. Um, I remember uh, me and my friend Nordine, um, 
he was a Moroccan guy. Me and him was best friends. Mm. And um, I remember um, we was about, must have been about seven, seven. And we was, um, we was, um, I should say, but we were, we were spitting across at the um, the infants. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like spitting up. <laughs> no, 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 we were spitting uh, at the um, young kids, the infants. Um, we were playing like next to us. You know what I mean? Like next, next to the um, to our to our uh, playground. And I remember um, the headmaster. I can't remember his name now. It was um, Mr. Bel- Mr. Belcher. I still remember him, like Mr. Belcher. Yeah. He called us. He called me and Nordy into the um, into the um, head office. Yeah. And never forget it. He was about eight years old. Um, and he um. Said look, you two, you two boys have been misbehaving, been carrying on, carrying on bad. You know what I mean? Like mm. disgusting. And I always remember he put us on his lap, and he gave us two slaps <laughs> on our lap. Yeah. Okay. Now that could that would be general, would it? Like, yeah, that would never he happen. He gave us two slaps on our ass. And I always remember me and him walking out, saying, "You never, you know, you never." He was laughing about it. Yeah. That's exciting my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so that would have been like that would be like 1980. Mm. You know, um, when teachers. There was no, there was no caning, but um, I mean, a slap, Still a couple claps, it was allowed, yeah. yeah. And that sticks out, you know. Um, I was eight years old, so um, yeah, that's a, that's a memory I've got. You know? so, so then, what about life in Croydon? How was that growing up in the the eighties? In the eighties, Croydon wasn't too bad. I mean, now Croydon's changed. I must mm. admit, Croydon's not the Croydon of in the eighties. Um, mm. When we moved there, it was quiet. It was um, it was um, affluent. Yeah, affluent. Yeah, conservative. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, mum and dad, mum and dad moved there from from Tooting because it was known as a quiet area, not not too far out of central London. Do you know what I mean, um, you know, um, it's somewhere good to bring up kids. Yeah, you know, um, so I'm not going to say it was it was rough. It was it was the ghetto because it wasn't. No, because I remember in the nineties it was a nice area. It remind it was like up there with like Beckenham and Bromley type areas. Mm. That's when it that's when it changed. Yeah, I, I would say the late nineties was when it changed. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people moved in from from inner London, from you know, Stockport, Brixton, Peckham. You know, I mean, from inner London, moved into Croydon. into Croydon, yeah, um, Battersea, Brixton, yeah. yeah. Campbell, so, mm. um, but I must admit, I had I had a good upbringing. You know, it wasn't it wasn't rough for me. Um, you know, um, you didn't miss any 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 meals. You didn't miss no meals. <laughs> you didn't miss any meals. <laughs> nah, nah, no, I never missed no meals, man. Never missed no meals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, um, what was you like in secondary school academically? What, what was you school? Was you smart? Um, I wasn't uh, academic at all, man. I'm nah? gonna lie Foundation to tier. I was always in the bottom class, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was always in the bottom class, but whether it's five or red or you know, whatever it was, I was always in the bottom class. I was. Mm. Um, I was uh, disruptive. Didn't want to listen. Yeah. No, I was naughty, really. I was um, I was naughty. I was getting told off. Mm. I didn't like school. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, did, I didn't like school because mm. I wasn't good at it. Did yeah. you have any subject which was your favourite? P- you P.E. P.E.? Mm. <laughs> yeah. P.E. Um, you know, where I could be active. I was very hyperactive. Yeah. Do you remember your, school, your P.E. teacher's name? Mr. Field. Mr. Mr. Field. Field. Yeah, Mr. Field. And, and Mr. Weston. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I ain't seen them since I left school, but yeah, they were they were good good teachers. Um you know, I was I was very hyperactive, so um I was I wasn't bad at running, athletics, mm-hmm. you know. Um but academically I wasn't very good at all, to tell you the truth. Okay, fair enough. So you didn't pursue to go college or anything like that afterwards? I left school and um started an apprenticeship. Okay, good. Um what? engineering. Um, mm. Precision work, and I was on the course for six months. And then mm. I did left it. You know, mm. um, I regret it because it was a three year apprenticeship, and um, I would have got a trade at the end of it. But again, I wasn't very good at it, and um, I left it. So, what did you go on to after that? And after that, after I left, left that, I was um, I was a storeman. Um, do you remember um, Payless? Oh, you guys have met, it, it was called it changed to I think it was a do it all nah huh? mm, pay less. About, about the 90s mm, all, the, just, all the guys who were about 40 remember it pay less nah I don't yeah, remember I, I think getting, it changed to I was just do you remember do it all then. nah don't remember that mm. talking nah. about 91 nah nah, nah I was just, I was just 91 pay less 
No, yeah. November, no? Was it like a no. shop? It was like, like a DIY right. store. It sold all DIY goods. I was, mm. I was like five then, but I don't mm. remember yes. it though. All DIY stuff, you know what I mean? Um, you know, um, I was there for, I was there for, I was there for about two years. Mm. Store work, um, working in the storeroom, doing a bit of forklift, truck driving. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good time today, you know. Um, mm. So you enjoyed, did you say you enjoyed that job? Yeah, I did I did a bit, yeah, because it, it was fun, you know what I mean? In the storeroom, you know what I mean? Catching joke and mm. you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing, you get me? So yeah, mm. it's Nicking, fun as well. Nicking tools? Well, say no more. <laughs> 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 You say it on me. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I lived, I lived 10 minute walk for it as well. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, was, that was handy, man. Um, mm. You yeah, go home at lunch times? Sorry? Did you go home at lunch times? No, I never, no. Oh. no. Um, there, was, um, there was a burger van mm. right, right outside the shop, so mm. we went there. But ask your parents about Payless. They were, they yeah, I'll ask them. And mm. anyone from that generation, let us know in the comment section if you remember that yeah, store. Man. Payless. Yeah, yeah. So then, how did you. Get into boxing then. What was your early sort of memories of boxing? Did you did your your, your dad or uncles and that do it or watch it while you were growing up? No, again, going back to me being hyperactive, I was I was um I was a very hyperactive kid, you know. Um, you know, getting into mischiefs, um, getting into rucks at school, you know what I mean. And I remember I had um, two friends, uh, Mark Mark Johnson and Donald Hazley. They were talking about boxing. They were talking about um, a gym they were going to called Croydon ABC. Mm. Okay, yeah, I know it. Yeah, which was um, in Thornton Eve, on top mm. of the pub, top of the Prince of Wales pub. And I heard him talking about it, and I said, um, "I like to come to that." You know, I'm like, "Oh, my, trying it out." Mm. I was, I think, I was in my last year at primary, so I was 10, 11. I was ten. Mm. And, um, I went up there one day, and. Um, you know that saying when they say when they say um, I felt at home. Yeah, uh, I wasn't good at school. You know, I was always getting told off at home. You know I mean, I, you know, I didn't feel that I was good at anything. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't feel I was good at nothing. You know, I mean, always getting in trouble. And <clears throat> it's like when I went to the gym within within like ten minutes, I felt like you know this is me. You know, what I mean, um, after the first session, I was told by the trainer John Sims. John Sims, sorry, John Niverson, the late John Niverson. Yeah. Um, you know, he said to me, "You're a good, you're you're, you're going to be a good fighter. You're going to be a champion. Come, come again." Do you know what I mean? And I felt, I felt worthy of something. You know what I mm. mean? Mm. So that was the beginning of it, really. Um, I started going there um, three times a week. I was there for about three, four months before I got my medical card. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, that's that's a short time, really. Yeah. 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 So going back to you saying you was always getting into rucks at school, mm. why do you feel that you was getting into these Barneys in, in school? Why? Um, maybe because I because I wasn't good at school, because I, maybe because I was a bit, what's the word I want to use? Um, maybe I was a bit, maybe you were a bit jealous of other kids. Because other frustrated. Kids, yeah, for, that's the word, frustrated, yeah, that's the word, frustrated. Yeah. Because yeah. I wasn't good at, I wasn't good at school. So, um, I was probably annoyed at myself. Do you know what I mean? Angry yeah, yeah. at myself because I'm not good at school. I was getting told off. I was in the bottom class. So basically, it was a way of um, releasing my anger. You know what I mean? Releasing my stress. Mm. So I mean, like now, I would have been diagnosed with one of those one of those conditions. You know, they got this MBHD and PDHD, whatever. I would have been seen. I would have been. ADHD. ADHD. Yeah, I was hyperactive. Yeah. I was very hyperactive. Yeah. <laughs> always, always in trouble. Let I me mean, couldn't keep still. Mm. My mum always say, "You got ants in your pants." Yeah, but seen your pants. Yeah, yeah. Could keep still, fidgety. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. So um Yeah, I was I was I was a naughty kid. I mean, I'm not proud of it. Yeah, I hear I was, that. I was I was I was I was a bad kid really. You know what I mean? Indoors giving my hassle, stress. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was I was an um, easy to handle. So would you say the licks you're getting you deserved it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get enough really, my dad. Mm. The rest of him, um he was he was a quiet man. He was um softy or so yeah he was a soft man mm. so he gave me licks but not not, not enough mm. and he he licked me and told me sorry afterwards mm. okay fantastic sack he lick he licked me and I'd um I'd run away crying to my room yeah yeah and then like ten minutes later 
the guy will come up, come upstairs and say, oh, where, where did it hurt? Where did it hurt? And I'll show you when you rub it. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, that's soft, nice. isn't it? I mean, yeah, like, yeah. sometimes we'll be like, what are you crying for? Boom, take yeah. that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. so um, yeah, he was soft man, my dad was. My mum was the, um, the um, one who had a discipline, you know what I mean? Main she disciplinarian. Was, yeah, mm. my mum was, yeah. Yeah. So then, so you said that you had, you got carded. So then talk to us about your first amateur bout then. Do you remember, tell us how, how, how that My first felt. bout, um, well, at the gym show. It was a gym show. They call it, was it skills bout? Yeah, it? gym show, skills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, well, yeah, it was a gym, a gym show. So it's not a bout, but it was a gym show against, against one of my, one of my club mates. Mm. Mm. I mean, um, we the same age, same weight. Um, and like I say, there's no winner. Yeah. So um, I remember um, going to a few shows, like, you know, you know when you go to shows like three, four times a week trying to get bouts. So could, I couldn't get a bout for about. Yeah, you go as a spare. Yeah, basically, yeah. So um, they put me and, uh, me and, me and Tony um, together in a gym in a gym show. So um, that was my first feeling of, you know, competing in front of a crowd. Um, but my, my first actual bout contest was um, against a guy called Danny Mason. Okay, I speak to him now, so big up Danny. What club was he from? He was from what better? He was from I think he was Ro- Rose Hill. Okay, yeah, I, I think he was from Rose Hill. You know, yeah, I think so. Yeah, let us know, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure he was Rose Hill. Yeah, got me there, but yeah, um, he was on a South Northern Victory. Okay, show. At the Corden Arena. Yeah. Remember them shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah at the Corden Arena. Um, well, when I boxed on South Northern Victory shows, it was at either Langley Park or Fairfield Halls. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it was there. Um, remember I boxed Danny. He had, he had two fights and one won. Mm. And I, I, had, I had no fights. And um, it was a close fight. And I think I won the majority. Yeah. I won the majority. But I won the fight. Um, got a big old... Long trophy, yeah, yeah, it was big, like a one a million cup. pound, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Money, yeah. Could, money could buy that feeling, you know. I was felt on top of the world. I mean, um, got a big trophy. Um, went home and showed mum and dad, and you know, what I mean, um, they were proud. Yeah, man, um, yeah, yeah, I hear that. So you had um, quite an illustrious amateur career. Mm-hmm. You boxed for England. You won national titles. How many national titles was it again? Two, two national titles. Um, so. I remember you, so you won the ABAs twice, right? Won the junior ABAs. Junior ABAs. And the senior ABAs. Yeah. So in the junior ABAs, mm. was that when you, who did you beat in the finals for that? I beat a guy from Stevenage called Mark London. Okay. In the junior ABA finals. That was um, a your call in 1990. Yeah. So yeah, and then in the seniors, I remember you had a great fight with um, Richard Williams from, he was from Battersea, right? Elsfield he was from. Elsfield? Elsfield, yeah. Oh, I thought he was from Battersea, yeah. ABC. Southwest Division, but no, he was, he was Elsfield. Okay, yeah, so that was a, that was a good fight. Yeah. I remember seeing that on um, YouTube, you showed me years later. Um, and then when you went into the senior ABAs, mm. you beat Spencer Fearon in the Southeast Divs Finals. That was a, was that a Crystal Palace? Crook Log. Oh, Crook Log. Yeah. At, that's a dancer, isn't it? Bexleaf. Yeah, dancing. Yeah, them Bexley, yeah, yeah, them yeah. side, yeah. And then you went on to be Chris Bessie yep. and um, Stephen Bendel in the final. But the the one that was very impressive was Chris Bessie because I think he still holds the record for the most ABA titles, right? Yeah, I beat Chris Bessie in the semi-finals um, in Newcastle and he was, he was the reigning... ABA welterweight champion. Yeah. Stepped up to like middleweight. Um, yeah, and I beat him in the, um, in the second round. And um, Stoppage. Stoppage, yeah. But yeah, you're right. He went on, he, win, he won seven ABAs. Yeah. He went on to win another six after me. And he boxed for the army. He was an army guy. Yeah, yeah army yeah. guy. Serious, serious. Big up Combined Chris Combined services, Bessie. yeah. Yeah. And then boxed uh, Stephen Bendel in the finals. Yeah. yeah. And um, you stopped him as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Me and Steve get on well as well. Um he um he tells me um I'm the only guy to stop him in the okay. amateurs and he had he had over hundred amateur fights. Yeah. Never been stopped. He was um he was 
six times national champion. Yep. Won all the juniors and schoolboys. So that was a that was a great a great win for me. Um, so that year was you did you stop everybody? Yeah. So you, yeah, you, that's also another uh, record you've got that you're the only person to go through the ABAs and stop every single opponent en route to the ABA title. So I'm told, yeah. I don't know how true it is, but yeah, that's what I'm told that, you know, um I beat I beat two ABA champions as well yeah. en route to it. So mm-hmm. that was a that was a great season for me, you know, nineteen ninety four. Yeah. So then did you go to the four nations after? Yeah, yeah. Um how did that go? Multi Mo- nations they called it. Um Well yeah, four yeah. It, was, um, it changed the four nations when you know no, you know what um, age group. For about two or three years after that, it was a multi nations because it was all countries from all over the world. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was all over the world. So um there was Canadians there, um, Australians, so it was called the multi nations. Okay. I think a few years later it was it was the four nations. Yeah. You know what I mean? About ten years afterwards. Yeah, yeah, um, my, my yeah. era. So I was in the Motley Nations and um, it was Commonwealth Games year. Okay. It was a Commonwealth Games year. So um, I was hoping on getting, you know, getting picked for the Commonwealth Games. But um, they picked me, um, Bendel and Bessie also in the um, in the team, in the England team. For the same weight? Yeah, in the same weight, in the Motley Nations. Anyway, um, I won my first fight against Joel Townsley from... From Scotland, even the first round. Mm. Um, remember, I damaged my my wrist in in that fight because I remember um, when you box for your country for England, you can't wear you know you can't wear um, as much bandage. Yeah, you got to wear them little crepe ones rules. from yeah. the chemist. <laughs> they got certain rules. I mean, yeah, 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 I remember them. That wasn't good for me. Yeah. And, um, even the gloves you wear, they're like very very padded. Mm. You know what I mean? So that never suited me. But anyway, I won the fight. And then um, I boxed the Canadian, Alan Bain, in my in the quarterfinal. I remember getting in the ring, looking at him, it was like a um, sawn off shotgun. Yeah. He was about five foot nothing, tick tonk. Right, I mean, look, 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 look. This guy, this guy looks hench, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I come out confident because um, I knocked out about seven guys on the shot. Yeah. Up until. Um, up until I fought um, Townsley. So, you know what I mean? I was looking at everyone out. So I went in there thinking I'm going to do the same thing. He traded off. Um, he caught me with a body shot oh. and a headshot and put me, <laughs> put me down. <laughs> Next minute, I'm like, rah, I got up. I got up and my head was just spinning. Yeah. My head was just spinning. I got up, I got up at a count of um, eight and um, the ref waved it off. Yeah. I, I was hurt. I'm not going to lie, I was hurt, but I could have continued. But, I suppose most guys say when they get up, they can carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he stopped me in the first in the first round. Yeah, Alan Bain and um, he went on to beat to beat Chris Bessie in the semis because Chris got to the semis. Yeah, mm-hmm. he beat Chris in the semis in the first round. Mm. So he, he was a big puncher. Um, anyway, long story short, um, I thought that they would have picked me for the Commonwealth Games. When they were picking the team for the games, I thought they would have picked me. Yeah, you know, even though I got beat in the quarterfinals, I never got a medal. So um, they didn't pick me. They didn't pick nobody. Nobody at um, like middleweight. None of you three. None of us. Um, Bessie got be- Bessie got got a bronze. Yeah, but um, there's no way they could have picked him over me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because I beat him in, in the um, ABAs and Bendel got beat in the quarters. So they didn't pick nobody at um, at my weight. So uh, you know, I was I was very very upset about that. All, all the boys went to um, Tallahassee, mm. you know, for the um, attitude training. Okay. Um, for about two weeks, and then um, came back home. Went to the games in Canada. Yeah. Which was you know would have been a lovely trip for me. But um, one thing that um, sticks in my mind always, and still works to this day, Joel Townsley, he got picked for Scotland. Yeah, even though he got beat by me in the first round, yeah, he got picked by he got picked by Scotland. Ain't that the same one you flattened in the second round? Yeah, and I thought you killed him. He went on his face. No, 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 no. That's Was that on the Nassim Christian Hamid? Black. That's Christian Black. Oh, Chris- it's from it's from Denmark. Oh, okay. No, um, Joe Townsley got picked for Scotland. But well, you done him in the second round though. In the, Joe Townsley in the pros. Yeah, in the pros. Yeah, but in the amateurs, I beat him in the amateurs um, in the first round. He he went for Scotland. 
and got a bronze. Yeah, imagine. He went he went on to get a bronze and he um only just just got beat in the semis by I think it was Nigeria and he got beat by a couple of points. So he just got to show you, you know, um a bit of luck. Yeah. You know, um you need a bit of luck in them in them tournaments. And um yeah, he got a bronze. And um yeah, that's it, yeah. So um that was ninety four. You know, but like winning the ABAs was um a dream come true. Yeah, I hear that. And so you ultimately decided to go pro. No, I took, I took pro in 95. Oh. I won the eight bases in 94, did get picked for the Commonwealth Games. Another another um, um, incident happened. I um, was picked for the World World Championships yes. in 95. Yes. In Berlin. The year that um, the um, brothers, Kitschko's brothers was there. All right. Kitschko's were there. Um, Mayweather was there. Floyd Weber. Floyd Mayweather. But, um, I broke my hand. Oh. So I didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> so that, um, oh. Another mm. disappointment. I broke my hand, didn't, uh, didn't get picked. Um, and before that, I got beat by Richard in the um, London finals. Yes. So um, I, had a, I had a bad... Richard Williams. Yeah, he beat me, he beat me in the London finals. The secret. That. So yeah, the secret, yeah. Um, big up Richard, me and him are still good friends. Mm. So I got beat by Richard. Um... I boxed Ringling afterwards against Scotland. I won that one. Then got then broke my hand sparring against um Franklin. Franklin. Huh? Franklin Sarfo. Franklin, Franklin Sarfo, yeah. Sarfo, yeah. Sarfo, man. He always um, talks about that. That's his, <laughs> do you know that's his claim to fame? Seriously. <laughs> he yeah. always tells me, he says that you dropped him a few times, but then you broke your hand on his head. Yeah. Um, yeah. Down the <laughs> lid. Yeah, down the lid. Yeah, we're sparring, I'm sparring, getting ready for the world, for the world championships. So, um, he done me a favor by coming down to spar with me because it was June, it was um end of season. Yeah. So he, you know, he was helping me out. I remember we were sparring. Um, I threw a shot and he he ducked, and he had the head guards on. You know, with, with no protection there, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. the top ten one. So I hit him on um, top of the head and broke my hand. And, um, yeah. Got out about that. Um, so I didn't go to the worlds. Um, I had I had about two months off. They went to the Moy Nations yep. in Liverpool. Got beat by the Canadian. Another Canadian beat me. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, that's it. I've had enough of the amateurs. Yeah. I want to go over. I'm going to turn pro. So just to clarify, so you yeah. started off at Croydon ABC. That's it, And yeah. then you, what age did you move over to Lillian? I started at Croydon um, at the age of 11. So um, I've got to give them credit because a lot of people say, I'm a limb boy, you know what I mean? But really, I boxed the Croydon for, for 10 years. Oh, wow. I boxed from the age of 11 to, no, I'm sorry, nine years, to 19. Yeah. So I learned, I learned my trade at Croydon. I learned yeah. how to box in Croydon. You know, I won, I said, I won a ABA junior title for Croydon. So um, I learned my trade at Croydon, really. Um, but I got to a stage where I was I was um, better than all the guys in the gym. I was, mm. um, I needed, I needed something, something to... Um, more competition. Yeah, that's the word, yeah. So um I was told to go to the Lynn. Yeah. So um yeah, I joined the Lynn at the age of nineteen twenty. Yeah. And that's how you um, became good friends with yeah, like so, Danny Williams. Yeah, Danny Williams, Seymour Johnson, Danny Watts. Yeah. Um, them man there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Another another Lynn legend in the yeah. building. So yeah, man, we produced them, we produced them. So yeah, so you so you ultimately decided to turn pro. Um who was you trained by? I was trained by John Sims and Steve Sims. Yes. Um, two two experienced trainers. Um, John had, you know, he'd, he'd been there for a good 15 years. He'd, he'd trained Henry Akinwande. Oh, yeah. Adrian Dodson, Chris Oko. So he was, he was, he was an ex-pro himself. Yeah. So, you know, he was um, a very experienced guy. Mm. I still see him now. Now and then. Um, he's now with the uh, McWells. Okay, my girl's gym. Yeah. So, um, so do you still see Henry Akin one day cause, or talk to him because he used to box at Lynn, but I think he's gone back to Nigeria, I heard. What, do so you... I hear, yeah. So I hear. I mean, you're talking, you're talking um, the 90s. It was the last time I see Henry Akin one day. Oh, oh a um, long time then. Yeah, when I was at the Lynn, he wasn't there either. So I don't really know him personally. Yeah. Mm. I, don't think he's, I don't think he's a real, he's a boxing fan. You know, some guys box because they're, cause they're good at it. Yeah, but they're not they're not real fans. So when it, when they retire, that's it. You don't see them again. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, fair enough. Fair yeah. yeah, I hear that. So then, so you start went pro. Um, you was known as a knockout merchant, knocking out quite a few guys. Then um, 
got to your first sort of acid test pivotal fight where it was against, I'd say, Paul Samuels. So it was like your first real test. Well, you know what? I want to go back. Uh, another what fight. With OJ, which, um, uh, what sorry? about OJ? Oh, OJ Abraham. Yeah. yeah, listen, OJ was further on, but a fight which people don't um, talk about a lot. I don't, I don't get the, um, the respect I deserve, I don't think. was a, Hear this. Um, in my third fight, I was 2-0. I boxed a guy called Jim Webb, who was 4-0. Mm-hmm. He was... He he won the Commonwealth Games in 94, which I was a pick for. Okay. He won the gold. Did yeah. he? he? He was he was a gold what, in medalist. In your weight? Yes, in my weight. Oh, right. He was a gold medalist. Um, he was with Frank Rowan. He was, he was tattooed like I was. He was um, trained with um, Brendan Ingle. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, he was live on Sky. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people don't, don't remember that fight, but um, it, for me, it was like a world title fight because he, <laughs> was, he was four and I was two and I, he won, he won a couple of games yeah. in my weight, which I thought I should have um, at least been in. And um, it was 1996, live on Sky. It was a live Sky fight and I knocked him out in the second round. Yeah. So, um, what shot was it? Left uppercut. Oh wow! Right. Left uppercut, yeah. He's both flat on his face as well, like like <laughs> like Christian like Black. Yeah. Watch that, watch that one day. I'm gonna have to watch that one. Yeah, I mean, it's a fight which no one talks about because it wasn't a big title. It wasn't a title fight. Yeah, because I've watched most of your fights, but I don't remember yeah, that one exactly. It was only it was only a four rounder as well. Yeah. No, ten, no, sorry, six rounder. Sorry, six rounder. It wasn't a big a big massive fight for the fans, mm. but people for the hardcore fans, they knew that it was a, it was a test. You know, what I mean, um, you didn't really get. Two hundred fifty amateurs fighting each other so early, mm. but there was two like middleweights in the um, sports network promotion. So and someone Frank to go. Warren was running the show <laughs> yeah. on his own. So <laughs> someone that, has to go, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dana White style. So, yeah, yeah. And I think he was favourite. He was favourite because he was four and zero and won a couple of games. So um, that was that was um, my first big win. That's when um, people started to take notice. You know, um, you know that that was my first major win as a pro. Yeah. And then you fought um, the Paul Samuels that was for the Southern area, right? No, OJ was no, for the no, Southern area. for the Southern area. So, oh no, OJ, OJ Abrams, Abrams for the Southern yeah, area. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah, talk to us about that fight. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he dines on this one, Mr. Me, Mr. What's it, me, myself and I? Remember, I fought him twice, you know? I know. Yeah, the, the first fight, I was I was 10-0, nine knockouts. I was looking at everyone out. I was being tired as a big prospect. Oh, AJ OJ was um, an experienced campaigner. I think he fought for the Southern area about two or three times. You know, yeah. he was a big puncher. He had a few um, upset wins. So um, it was my yeah my first real major test to the fans. You know what I mean? Like um, a fight that people thought you know um, OJ would take me a few rounds. And um, I always remember when we got in the ring um, again another another live sky fight. When we got in the ring. He was opposite me, but you know when someone just looks shook, yeah, scared, and he, he's, he's bouncing up and down, but he's definitely shaking. Mm. And I remember Dean Powell, the late Dean Powell, kept saying to him like, you know, what I mean, like, be confident, look at him, look at him, don't look away, look at him, look at him. You know what I mean, like, he was, you know, when someone just mm. was trying, but he didn't, he didn't want to do it. Yeah, he was looking at me, but he was kind of a little nervous. Anyway, Bill went. Um, I came out, um, put it on him for the first round. In the first round, and then, um, he he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to fight. And uh, long story short, I had him in the corner, and he um, before that he was getting, he was getting worn for his head. He was kept kept getting in with the head, and like he was trying to find a way out. You know, like he was trying to find a way out. Yeah, he kept using the head and was 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 fouling within the first within the first thirty seconds a minute. Mm. And then he was in the corner, and he raised he raised his knee in my, yeah, in my groin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the referee yeah. saw it and just stopped it and went. I <laughs> <laughs> waved, <laughs> waved it off. That was his way out. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. The crowd went mad. I was, I went mad thinking. You know, I mean, like I went to win, I went to win the fight properly. Yeah. I remember Frank Warren um, said, said, "Let it carry on, let it carry on." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we waved it off. You know, um, it was a blatant foul. Mm. It wasn't really hard, but it was just like the limit of it. Yeah, you know what yeah I mean? it was blatant. It's yeah. flagrant. Yeah. So, mm. um, but he was looking the way out. He was looking the way out, and he got his way out, didn't he? Yeah. So, so um, I won my first title by disqualification in the first round, yeah. which, which was a anti-climax. Uh, yeah, very. Because I, I sold a lot of tickets for that fight. 
Mm. You know, I sold a lot of tickets for that fight. My first title fight. And um, a win's a win, but yeah, yeah. I want it. I well, want that's it, not um, the way you wanted sorry? to win it. Yeah, I was like, it's actually in the first round. You know what mm. I mean? I trained hard for the fight. I trained very hard for the fight. Um, I remember it was, um, it was January or February. So I trained over Christmas, New Year's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Made sacrifices. Yeah, yeah, for that fight. And, um, you know, but um, I got my first belt, you know, so, so um, I was glad. So tell us, Danny brought up a little earlier about Paul Sam, uh, Paul Samuels and how you captured the vacant British title. Yeah, um, Paul Paul Samuels was um, two fights after the um, the AJ fight, OJ fight. Sorry, and um, yeah, Paul Paul was um, an undefeated big puncher. He had fifteen fights, fifteen wins, thirteen by KO. Mm. You know, he was he was well tired. He was knocking out everybody. You know. Um, so you just saying all that when you was getting into that fight, what was your what was your mindset? What was you thinking? I was I was I was confident, you know. Mm. I was I was confident, you know. Um, I went in there just dreaming of um, winning the British title because mm. winning the British title was was a was a dream of mine as a kid. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, watching the likes of Hannigan win it. No you know I mean, um, you know, Mason Element. You know, watching all the watching all the, all the Top British fighters in the eighties mm. win it. You know, it was a dream of mine. So you know, um, I just uh, I was I was hungry. You know, I, you know I was I was I was um, relentless in training. You know, that was another fight that was um, in February. Yes. So I trained. I trained for right, Christmas, Christmas, New Year's, yeah, dedicated yeah. myself. You know, what I mean, and said, look, I'm gonna put myself through this to win this British title. You know, so you know, I, I was um, hungry and I was very keen, and ambitious for the fight to happen. Mm. So he wasn't doing no looking away like your last opponent, yeah. Paul, yeah. No, no, no. no. But listen, <laughs> he, was mate, a, he was a madman. Yeah. Yeah. Paul was up for it. No, I came in the ring. Paul yeah, was up no. for it. I tried to stare him down. Yeah. And he went having it. He, he was stare <laughs> yeah. me back. You know what I mean? He, yeah. It was eyeball to eyeball fight. He was confident. He was mm. confident. You know. Um, and that was a shootout. That fight. Yeah. Listen, mm. he was confident for the fight. He had, he had the late um, Enzo um, Joe like his dad and Enzo Kazaki yeah, in, in his corner. Cool he was cheering him on. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was. Um, you know, it was, it was that was definitely a fifty-fifty fight. Mm. Um, yeah, he hurt you in there. Yeah, listen, Paul Samuels, I would say, hit me harder than anyone ever mm. hit me. Mm. Canadian hit me nearly as hard. In the amateurs, Alan Bain, but mm. Paul Samuels hit me harder than anyone ever hit me as as a pro. Um, harder than Harry Simon. Yeah, yeah, single oh. punch, single punch. Yeah, okay. And um, well, you can see by uh, uh, Paul Samuels, even when mm. he was when he got older, when he knocked out the what's it, prospect seller render, mm. yeah. and Paul Samuels was an old man then when they um, they dropped each other famously together, and yeah. Then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Paul Samuels, he always had he always had that detonator. He so was, that was he a good was naturally win. Naturally heavy handed. Yeah, that was yeah. a good that was a good knockout you did there. Like you proper had to nail him. Like yeah. at the end, you could see you proper had to like yeah. proper nail him on the way down. To keep him down because that was that yeah that was a good fight that one. Remember, um, it was at a time where like middleweights could wear eight ounce gloves. Yeah, mm. and, um, they make those gloves rayers. You could feel your knuckles like through them. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, um, he he busted my eardrum. Yep, the left hook. He mm. cut me under the eye. All in all in three rounds. You know, yeah. um, a couple of times, a couple of times, you might not have a feeling. Um, you know, when, you know when a guy's, you know when you're out on your feet, have you ever been hit with a shot? And you know, if you get hit again, you're going to go down. Mm. I've had no? that TV switch where it goes, Meow. Well, yeah, similar. Yeah, he hit, yeah. Me, he hit me. I can remember one time he hit me and I was out on my feet. Yeah. Literally, and I, one more shot, I would have been definitely down. Yeah. That's how hard he hit me. Yeah. But the world, the world to win, no, um, mm. no, it was, it was, you know, I'd rather be carried out of the stretcher that day. You know what I mean? I, was, I couldn't lose. I could mm. not lose. But so after that, so you won the British title, yeah, and then you know you like you like a bit of a party, so you famously Do I? <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, back in the day, so you famously you know I heard, you, uh, uh, you know man them on the road, man them on the road. They said that you walked here, around, yeah. you walked around, you went into, gra you went into granaries. <laughs> oh my god, with a British title. <laughs> oh my god, moving like you're the man. So how was that night? That must have been a that must have been a, a, a good night. I was, on, <laughs> I was on top of the world, brother. I was on top of the world, mate. The king of Croydon that day. <laughs> I mean, um, granaries was a club to be. 
to be at that's the place to night. be yeah you know what I mean you've been there enough times isn't it both of you you've been oh, there I've been Ooh, there a few times yeah, yeah Grand Hills was a club you've been there yeah. oh right that was the club to be on the, um... is it still called that yeah it's still there oh no, no, no. yeah my friend you know, my friend's a manager of it now. no you know what it's, it, it closed down last year you know Grand Hills is closed now literally last year I read I read Sure, I'm pretty I sure. Have to, pretty I have sure. To ask my mate because he was he was he was running it. Do you know what? Or it might be new man, new management. I think. Yeah, my mate, my mate runs so it. So he's still called Granaries. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Still called Granaries. Oh, so he's new manager. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The manager. Um, I knew. I think he he gave it up. Then he sold. Yeah, it. he sold it. I'll okay, sell it to my friend. Okay, yeah. so he's still there. He's still there. Yeah, still there. All right. All right. Still popping. Okay. Yeah, that was the place to be on a, on a Saturday. So um, after I won the belt, um, so you know what? Let's let's stay at home. Let's. Stay at home and uh, party, so yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I had the butt around my waist, um, had my girl beside me, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, you yeah, little browning sometimes. Bev, <laughs> she's um, listening. Hi, Bev, <laughs> <laughs> Bev Kato. Um, but yeah, listen, yeah, good times. I mean, it was, it was a dream come true, it was a dream come true. That's all, like, you know, um, it's a, it's a not cliche, but it was money couldn't buy that, um, yeah, you know, um. But then the British title was something I dreamt of from a ten year old boy, you know what I mean? And and winning it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. So then you do you then you struggled to get like defences for it, I remember. There's like you went a couple of years or was it like you because I remember there was guys like um Anthony Farnell, um I think you fought Joe Townsley, like you fought Joe Townsley, right? You yeah. defended your British title against the Townsley. I think like seven months later or something. My 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 dream after winning the title was to Wouldn't defend it, right. it. To defend it three times. It mm. changed. I think the year I won it, it changed from defending it twice to three times. Yeah. yeah. So you got yeah you got four notches as they say four notches, and um. At that time as well, it was when they started to bring in intercontinental titles. Yeah. WBO mm. intercontinentals, IBF. So. There was other routes where guys could go, mm-hmm. and Andy Farnell was up and coming. He was, um, you know, he was um, well tatted. You know what I mean? Um, he, he sold loads of tickets. Yeah, and um, he he went down the WBO into route. I yeah. mean, so he he was once nominated number one to fight me, but he went another route. Yeah, um, right. We asked Ryan Ryan Rhodes. Yeah, he didn't he, he didn't want it. The Spice Boy. So yeah, the Spice Boy. Uh, Ryan's a good fighter and a friend of mine. So I'm, listen, um, if you can go another route and go an easy way, why not? Yeah. You no. Know, um, I remember. Um, do you remember Lee Blundell? I remember Lee the Blundell. Name, but he he, he really... beat Ryan Rhodes. Did he? Um, yeah, oh. it, an upset win. Um, we asked for him, and the board of control wouldn't have him. Okay. Um, that, that's, that's three defenses there. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I was. I was matched to fight Howard Clark. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Howard Clark at Elephant Castle, um, sports center. I was training to fight him and I damaged my knee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I damaged my knee um, when I was running. Um, so that was my fault. That would have been a defense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Howard, Howard just, he boxed um, Vargas. Fernando Vargas. Yeah, for the IBF title about. Yeah. about a year or six months before that, and yeah. he was he was he was decent then. So that's one fight which I'm to blame. And um, so after um, I think it was 18 months, I um, I was nominated. So Joe Townsley yeah. was nominated to fight me. He was number one challenger for the uh, British title. So I, I defended it for the first time against Joe. On it was on the undercard of it was on a Sky Sports um, pay per view. Prince Nassim. Mm. The undercard, the main event on Sky was um, Lennox Lewis fighting Rahman. Oh, Hasim Rahman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I think it was the first or second fight. I can't remember. Um, the no, it had been the second one because um, the first one was in South Africa. Yeah, mm. it was the first fight. So it was um, a pay-per-view event um, in Scotland. Yes. Mm. In, in Joe's hometown. And top of the bill was was Steve Robinson. Mm. Tell like, um Scott Harrison. Yeah, Scott Harrison fought Steve Robinson. Okay, yeah. That was the um, top of the bill when I was chief support. So that was my first defence. Um, um, I won that one in the second round. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that that was um, that was a great feeling, you know, to defend my, to defend my British title. 
yeah. in a man's home t- hometown as well. Yeah. I remember it was freezing cold at night, I remember. Freezing cold up in Scotland. Mm. So then afterwards, then you moved on, you won the European title. Yeah. Um, it was against a Pablo Penance. How do you pronounce that, his surname? Sorry? It was against a Pablo... How do you pronounce the guy's surname? It was... Um, Pizzamiglio, yeah. 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 <laughs> Paolo Pizzamiglio, yeah. Yeah, that was... Um, would have make it in European. But you forgot... I fought Harry Simon before that, you know? Okay. You forgot that one, mm. didn't you? Yeah, okay. So, you, yeah, because that one come at short notice. Yeah. That fight. So, I know there was a lot of negotiations... You um, you know, you drove a hard bargain. So you've been told. Yeah, so I heard. <laughs> Word on the canvas, you know. So um, and um, you got a career highest purse for the WBO world title. Yeah. Um, how much was it? A week's notice? Two weeks? Ah, oh, a day's notice. A day's a notice. Day's notice. Yeah, 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 a day's notice. A day's notice. Um, for real? Well, you know, I know if it was if it was the other way round, you'd like to pocket watch and ask me the exact <laughs> figure. <laughs> oh, how, much I, how much I got? So. Yeah, do you want to tell us how much you got for that fight? No. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm yeah, yeah, I've got decent money. I've yeah, got, you I got, got well paid. Yeah, you got well paid. I've got well paid. Um, I mean, and you put up a good effort. I saved, I saved the show. Yeah, and you rocked him. And I think he said that that's the only, that's like the hardest he's ever been hit. Um, yeah, me and Harry, me and Harry speak to this day. Um, yeah, he always tells me that he's never been hit as hard. I had him, I had him, I had him out. If he weren't such a, such a good fighter, um, I could have stopped him, I, I believe. Harry, Harry Simon, he he should have been in the mix with Vargas, well, Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya, them mm-hmm. times there, but he had um, a certain um, couple of incidents, you know what I mean? Car car crash incidents, which messed up his career. You know, yeah. unfortunately. And he retired undefeated. Yeah, you know, he he, he was a, he was, the, he was the best fighter ever fought. He was the best. And you nearly fought um, Oscar De La Hoya, right? Mm. Who told you that? <laughs> I heard, I heard word. <laughs> when, I, when I won the European title, yes. When I won the European title, um, Oscar was the WBC champion, and I I got I got a number five ranking. Mm. So I was I was number five below. Yeah, below Oscar. So um, you could have been called for a theory, voluntary defense. Sorry, you in could've... theory, um, that would have been um, very fight, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So then you won. We would have won that one. Four. <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> Oscar. Oscar didn't even know who I was. Yeah. <laughs> so he then would been, it would have been like Wayne, but he would he would have, he would have been my dream my dream fight as a like middleweight. Yes. Would have been against the Golden Boy because he was the Golden Boy, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. So that would be, that would have been a dream come true to fight to fight Oscar. Yeah. So then you fought for the um, WBU or yeah. title. Yeah. Um, so who was that against again? And how 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 did that Thomas fight? McDowell? How did that fight come about? WB WBU. Yeah. Yes. Against Takalu. Yes. Yeah. Morad Takalu. Yeah. Because um, the, the the word is that you know he's like had a few gym spars, um, and he he got the better of you. Must have done you with a body shot or something. Allegedly. Where's he from? Takalu. He's from like Margate. Margate. Yeah. Um. Let's go to the um to the beginning. Ta- um, Takalu turned pro a couple of years after me, mm. so I, I was like touted. I was you know I was, I was a prospect. Um, and um, he came to the to the Peacock Gym, yes, to be, to be trained by Jimmy Tibbs, who, who I was being trained by. Mm. And um, I didn't really know much about Takalu, but he knew who I was. You know what I mean? You know mm. he was he was like middleweight as an amateur, so a bit younger than me. So I mean, you know, he knew who I was, and I'll always remember whenever. Whenever we aspired, it was like a world title fight to him. Mm. You no, know, he, he was like he had something to prove. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, I was, I was, I think I was about five and I was six at the time. So you know, he was obviously he wanted to be number one, didn't he? So mm. you know, he was he had ambitions to be to be a champion. So um, whenever we aspired, he you know he was really up for it, and um, we had good spars. I must admit, we had good spars. He, he was a good fighter, Takalu. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we had good spars for somebody that I think when he had when he was um. He had no fights as a pro, you know. He he still gave me a good spar. Yes. So um, he he had a, he had about five fights. I defeated with, with Jimmy, and um, you know we we had loads of loads of round sparring, which I thought I had the better of. Mm-hmm. He thought we had the better of. Um, and I remember one day 
Um, one day, um, I came in the gym, and Jimmy said, "Oh, I'm tackling a spa. Go and give me tackle a spa." I, I didn't want to spa. I said, "I didn't want to spa." I was like, oh, I, can't, "I can't bother." It. Jimmy goes, "Go and spa." You know what I mean? I like, give him a spa. What's wrong with you? So like, got my gloves on. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to spa. I got my gloves on. Tackle is all like, getting out free. You know what I mean? Like, got in the ring. Oh, went. Tackle who jumped on me. Bang! Hit me in the right hand. Yeah. Dropped me. Oh man! <laughs> He's dead me. Jimmy's gone. Get up! I <laughs> <laughs> mean, Jimmy's got to be get up. <laughs> I mean, big up Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, I got up. Uh, we carried on sparring, and um, I remember um, afterwards, I was, I was, I was gutted. I was like, you know what? How did that happen? Tackley was, you know, walking around Jimmy with a big smile on his face. You know what I mean? Had <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. a big grin on his face. So I was like, you know what? I can't leave this down now. So anyway, anyway. Takalu, he um he lost his next fight. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he lost his next bout against I think Kalig. Remember Kalig? No. It was Kalig from um Sheffield Way. You know, but he, he lost his next fight and he started coming up with excuses how um Jimmy Tibbs is always he's always preferring me in the gym. You know, he spends more time on me on me in the gym and he's not looked after enough and you know, um how um, you know, He's a better fighter than me. He knocked, he knocked me out in the gym. Yeah. I was carried out on a stretcher. Oh I, my I, I, God. I was being told I was carried out on a stretcher and, you know, I want to fight Wayne because I was still undefeated. Yeah. I was still winning my fights. You know, I, I'm better than Wayne. I want to fight Wayne. I knocked him out. So that is um, where, where it starts from, you know, where it stems from. But but let me go back. I would say I had the better rounds in general. Okay. When we sparred. Because I forgot to tell you also, also, when he put me down, we sparred about a week afterwards. About a week after we sparred, we got in the room, we sparred, and we had a good hard spar. Yeah. I remember um, I caught him with a shot and he dipped. He dipped like he was going to go down. And Jimmy went, stop, 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 hold it, you know what I mean? Mm. I said to Tackle, you're right, you're right. Give him, give him about a 10 second rest, yeah? Mm. Like standing cut, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> give him a standing cut, yeah? yeah? And he said, oh, I'll be right, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. We carried on sparring. We had another, like, another clash and I banged him again yeah. and he, he, went, he went and Jimmy got stops by and leave it and leave it stops by and like, yeah. end it now if he gets that that clever gets that I stopped him in the gym if, if he gets that I stopped him in the gym <laughs> if he gets about that that's the fact I stopped him in the gym come on and I remember, I remember he walking around all gutted in the gym you know what I mean like yeah. now smiling you get me yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? if he that's, gets about that spring your step when yeah, you, if you, you order the fruit <laughs> salad at the counter after <laughs> but he forgets about that you know what I mean he forgets about that so um but listen, listen, Takalu was a good fighter. Yeah, he, he was, was a good fighter. He was strong. He was a good all-rounder. Um, I think he was one of those guys that were better in the gym. Yeah, gym you know, fighter. He was a, yeah, he, he, could, he could fight. You know, he proved that he could fight. You know what I mean? Well, let's talk about ultimately the fight because yeah, yeah. that was the fight which, you yeah. know, that has got, that's the fight you're most known for today. Yeah. That, yeah. f- that fight goes viral. Everyone was there. Yeah. Tunde was there. Junior Up McDonald. Yeah, yeah. Me. Um, Everyone was there. You were called Bethnal Green. I was on the balcony. Even to this day, I get guys saying I was there. Well, I really, really, we really? like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, um, York Hall holds only about two thousand. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that, but, but like, you can yeah, you everyone, can sardine yeah. it up though. Yeah, yeah. It was it was on. Um, it was jammed. It was, I remember it was rammed. It was rammed. Um, uh, I remember watching it like the replay and um, the um, commentator saying now, yeah, it was packed. I remember it was hot. It was a hot day as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But going back, like I said, um. Takalu, he um, he carried on with his career. You know, after he got beat, he, he, he done well. He carried on. He done well. He won a WBU against Jim Rock. Yeah, he had a good win against him. He fought. He went on to fight Daniel Santos. Yes, who was a good champion. Good WBO champion. He fought over a WBO. Lost on points. I I uh, won the European. Um, then um, I had a, had a defeat against um, the Wemelis. Yeah. And I wasn't. Um, yeah, that was a shock defeat. That yeah, one. I, um, I lost two stone in six weeks. Yeah, after um, fight Delroy, um, you know, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't training like I should have been. I wasn't living a life. I was partying, like you said. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't living a life. Um, so, how did you end up getting into like mixing with the wrong crowd? Would you say? You no, know, um, I would say you know, I would say a little bit of fame got to my head. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, um, you know, I was um, getting a lot of attention. You know I mean, like, you know, I mean, everyone wants, wants to be your friend, and mm. you know, I mean, um, 
No, um, I felt like I was the man. I felt like I was probably bigger than what I was. You know, hang on, hang on, yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. So like, I got carried away. You know, you know, then you think that you start, you start missing days in the gym, and you know what I mean, thinking oh, I'll be alright. You know what I mean? Like, mm. winning all my fights. You know what I mean, you got, you got a bit of money in your pocket. So yeah, I would say a bit of fame got to my head. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Um, you know, um, like I said, I was, I wasn't good at anything else and like you know, becoming a champion like you know I mean everyone wants to be your friend and I felt like I was worthy or something so mm. yeah got a bit got a bit carried away got, too, got ahead of yourself basically yeah that's the word yeah, yeah. Got, got ahead of myself yeah. So, so yeah so you got the shot and then um, and then yeah your career started to go a bit downwards yeah, after that yeah <laughs> and then we had the that's where I, but I met you when I fought on the uh, when it was Mike Tyson and Bruno came as like some special guests mm. when uh, it was on a Lee Lee Greenwood Lee Greenwood, that's it, yeah, yeah. Lee Greenwood show and I remember I took the picture of you I was like a fan so oh, can I get a picture and you had the Brandon. like the collar the grey sort of <laughs> collar thing and then I got the chance partner, right? to I got yeah I got the chance to go out and be your chief spying partner in Tenerife yeah. at the TKO gym with Jimmy Yellow yeah good and, times um, yeah we had a great time out there man and um yeah, we had some good rounds. Great time training, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, we, we had some work. <laughs> <laughs> we had more, okay. Well, yeah, training yeah, yeah. and partying. We, we worked hard on partying, didn't we? We worked, yeah, yeah, yeah. worked and played hard. Yeah. You know, um, I remember I was, I'd, I'd um, been inactive. Well, I'm more or less retired. I, I had a box for about eight months, and I, that was going to be um, a little cab to like see if I wanted to um, continue. Co- continue or come back. And after that, Said nah. After um, I went tear up with Darren and I mean mm. with Danny. Sorry. Um, so you saying put him into yeah, retirement, Danny? A young fresh, <laughs> <laughs> a young <laughs> fresh, young buck. You know what I mean? <laughs> Giving it to me. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I thought, well, you know what? It's not for you no more. Leave it to the youngsters. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Dan, Danny showed me that his know, time was up. His time, my time was up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a bittersweet moment because, but I remember I was. Do you know where it was? You see, when you're shook, yeah. you can perform out of your skin. Because I remember when I was getting on the plane, I don't know if you remember, but I was proper breading it with you, like trying to be your friend, hoping that when we get in there, mm. that you don't bang me hard. Because all I can, all I remember is visioning knockouts, man on his face, <laughs> man on his back, head, man's getting his jaw spun. So I was thinking, if this brother hits me, what's going to happen? Because mm. I'm seeing all these other people there as well, like these sparring partners, like Scott, Scott Derman, yeah. um, Mike Mafusion, Ross Payne, um, Liam Griffiths um, so I'm like oh if I get chinned all these lot are going to see this mm. luckily shame, it social media yeah so I was thinking so I was I was fighting on fear and that's probably what made me perform out of my skin you know that saying um, I think it's about Tyson says fear is a man's best friend yeah I was you say, sure you say we use fear though. some people use fear in a good way where you, you, you can be alert and keeps you mm. sharp yeah Keep, keeps you focused yeah and like you say, some, I, some people's fear can Made him yeah, freeze. Because I remember the first bar, I was doing well, and then you started busting up my ribs. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I don't like this feeling. Because you, you was proper going to the body. And I was thinking, because it was odd, because you weren't known for doing body shots, but I was thinking you was proper breaking me down. So I thought, <laughs> nah. So then after through the week, I had to, I had to. You come back with some body yeah, shots, brother. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I had you, to. I had, had to. A, it was a good spa. Yeah, still, good. On, still good on, um, on a couple on clips, Facebook there. Yeah, like, a couple we had, clips we had a, a good few rounds there, man. Um, yeah. But like I said, you showed me that Wayne leave it to the youngsters. I was 33 at the time, I think. 30, yeah, and I was, 30, yeah, I was so, mad um, young. But I remember you talking about there was a person who you sparred who you didn't think was going to go on to be as good as they was. And that was none other than the Cobra Carl Froch. Yeah. So tell us about those spars. Cause yeah, listen, um, I was, at the time I was, I think I was, British and European champion. I was definitely a British champion anyway. I was training at the um, Lennox Lewis gym. Yeah, Academy, yeah, in Liverpool um, Street. Sorry? Is that in Liverpool Street? In, uh, in Hackney, Captain. Lennox Lewis gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was owned by Panos. Was it Panos? Remember Panos? No, um, but yeah. I remember I remember he had the Academy yeah. gym though. I've never been um, there though. Yeah, it was a good little gym. I was there with Jimmy Tibbs. Um, OJ was there. Um, Steve Murray. And um, the Hennessy boys um, called them, was it the class of? Class of 2002. Yeah. David Walker, um, the O'Reilly. Farewell brothers. Yeah. Anyway, um, Carl Fox was there. And um, I remember um, Jimmy saying, like, you know, have a few rounds with um, 
Carl, you know, he, um, at the time, I think he was he won the um, world bronze, didn't he? And yes, the same year yeah, David Hay won the silver. It, yeah, so yeah, he was, he was a prospect to give me a few rounds. I learned about him, so give me a few rounds, you know what I mean, see, see what he's like. And um, we sparred, and I put it on him a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, to let him know his boss should get me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you his boss. And I always remember, I kept catching him with right hands. Yeah. You know he fights with the left hand now? Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I put it on him. I'm, you know, he was he was a novice, like, never had a pro fight. I was British and I, think I was just British champion, but so I was more experienced than him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So um, but I remember, like, putting it on him, but I, I do remember he held the shots, he held the shots well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He held them well. I remember that he held the shots well, but... Um, that chin, yeah. It was easy to do it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but easy to do it. <laughs> so I remember coming out of the gym, and I'm um, saying to Jimmy, uh, Jimmy said, what do you think of him? Like, you know, everyone's tagging him. Goes, I said, he's all right, um, but he's, he's too easy to do it. <laughs> I said, um, he, might, he could win a British title. You know what I mean? <laughs> he could win a British title, but he's too easy to do it, man. He's too easy to do it. Um, and I was I was about, I was training for a fight, so I was like around weight. And he was like super middleweight. So he was he was about a stone heavier than me. Mm. So I thought, you know what, he's all right, but um, I can't see me more than a British champion. And, how wrong was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? How wrong was I? He he lived a life, you know, he um you know, he, he trained like a soldier, didn't he? You yeah. know, he, he was very dedicated. Yeah. And he he um looked out for him. Well that's kind of that's a good story you you brought there because someone was talking online. I was do I was on the live watch along with um boxing beats and rhymes and it was a guy talking about um that Kieran Ajarko going, Oh, he ain't gonna be anything. He's just he's just had a tough fight with um, Troy Williamson, Williams. and we're like, yeah, but this is like just domestic level. It doesn't show you his ceiling. Yeah. Like, give it a chance. We're not saying he, no one's saying he's meant to be going in with Tim Tzu next or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. Like, give a man a chance. So it's a good that's a good story you've just brought there, where you've you know dealt beat up um, Carl Froch a bit, and you was thinking, <laughs> well, I don't think he's gonna really yeah. do much. But then he's gone on to you know. His ceiling was much higher than you ever thought it would be. Now yeah, he's a, 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 a boxing British legend. Well, I remember also Carl's even said he's he even stated he also sparred with um, Howard Eastman. Howard yes. was there, and he, also, he said after sparring with me and Howard for that week, he said he said he didn't want to um, continue fighting. Yeah, he said um, to uh, McKenzie, "Am I am I ready for this pro game?" You know, he was yeah. a bit he was a bit doubtful about it. Yeah, but like I said, I, I was I was. An established champion, so you know what I mean. It wasn't like I was a novice. Yeah, I was an established pro champion. But um, through his hard work and dedication, it shows you again that you know it's not always the best guys that make it. If you know what I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. So um, yeah. But we was going. Let's go back to um, the Takalu fight. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I saying? Um, I. Got beat by Darren Mellis. We spoke about that. Um, and um, talk about the build up to the, to this fight. The build up. To no, I'm saying I, I, I weren't living a life. I weren't training like I should be. And I, I said to myself, you know what? I need, I need to get away. Um, Jimmy Tibbs is a great trainer. I got me to where I was. Um, it was an honor training with Jimmy. You know and I mean, like, I remember we mean Danny. Me and Danny went to Jimmy Tibbs to train us. And we was like, you know when you're a raw, yeah. overawed by, you know, by Jimmy. So like, it was an honor to be trained by Jimmy. But I felt like I needed a, needed, needed, um, a change. Mm. You know what I mean? And I remember saying, saying, to, saying to Frank Warren, I want to um, I want to change, you know, I want, I want a new surroundings. I want to um, even, even like go to another, another camp. Mm. And um, he said, all right, how about, how about John Breen? Mm. John Breen in, in Belfast, Ireland. And um, I was like, well, you know what? All right, I'll, I'll give that a go. And um, he arranged it, spoke to John Breen, and um, I got ready, you know what I mean? Pack my stuff, because let me go back a little bit, because the fight was made with, with Takaloo. Yes. The fight was made with Takaloo, and I said, you know what, for this fight, I want to. Um, you surround is I want I want to like try something different. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I went to to um to Frank and he said go to Ireland to be John Breed. And um I remember going there and I remember flying over, 
flying over um, Belfast. And I always remember something hit me. I was like, wait, man, make sure you're going to like this island. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's not many black people there. Yeah. I mean, that, that IRA, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, like, you know what? You ain't going to like it, Wayne. You, you're not going to like this, bro. You know what I mean? Um, and I landed and I was greeted by by Mickey Hughes and Chris Hughes, who were good friends with, with John. They were they were the guys who were going to put me up. And um, they moved me forward. They, they looked after me well. I was made to feel at home from from day one. I mean, I felt within a week or two, I, I felt at home. I had good people around me. I was... Um, well looked after by, by John Breen. I was in a new surroundings. I was with good fighters, Jim Rock, Neil Sinclair, Eamon McGee, Paul McCluskey. So mm. I had good sparring. Um I um I was running with a guy, Cookie, who was a marathon runner. He'd be knocking on my door every morning, six in the morning, getting me to run four miles. I was running four miles three days on one day off yeah yeah four miles and then on a sunday we was running up running up um county armar they call it bandit country mm. bandit country is like where the ira used to plot and um shoot shoot the brits the oh, <laughs> so wow. soldiers bandit country so i was running up the mountains up there every sunday six six seven miles um done that for 10 weeks so i, I was I was um, well prepared. I remember, I'll always remember again, the day before I flew over to England for the weigh-in, I remember like shaping up in the in the gym. And you know, you just feel like you're on top of the world. I, yeah. just felt, I felt like I couldn't get beat. I felt like, you know what? There's no way I'm going to get beat. Taku can't beat me. Yeah. You know, um, I felt, I felt, I felt great. Uh, I put the work, I put the work in and um, yeah. The rest is history. Exactly, as you say. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you so then you retired. You're now a referee. Yep. And um, you're a full-time father as well now. Yeah, I'm a full-time father to my 11-year-old daughter, Shania. So how's that, how's that been? How's that changed you as a person? It's changed me a lot, you know. Um, it's made me grow up a lot. You know, it's, it's a responsibility. You know, um a big one. I've got, I've got, I've got a child that depends on me, that relies on me. Mm. You know what I mean, I've never had that before. I've always been a baby father. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to the oldest one, yeah. Yeah. I've always, I've always, I've been there for my kids. I've always been there for my kids, but I can go and come as I please, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, over the past four years, I've, I've, I've settled down. She's made me grow up. Um, we got a good relationship. You know what I mean? Um. um yeah, um, I'm proud of her. She, she's doing well at school. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it flies by, you know. She's 11 now. She's uh, in her first year at senior, year yeah. seven. Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe. So, yeah, she um, she takes up a lot of time, which I'm grateful, I'm grateful about. Um, like you said, I do the refereeing. Yeah. I was doing security up until I had my daughter. Um, so, yeah. Like life is, life is okay. I'm, I'm content. You know what yeah. I mean, Danny. Um, yeah. Life could be a lot worse. No, but no. Much respect to you. For, you know, being being a sing, uh, single father and stuff. So, yeah, man. Much respect. Yeah, yeah. You don't get many about, do you? Tell you the truth, you don't get many. Well, you you, you do surprisingly. It's just yeah. men don't really speak it's, it's, about. Yeah, that's what I to okay. say. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Okay. Men don't really sc- sc- okay. uh, sc- it from shout the from the roof. Yeah, yeah. As they like say. Like me, what are you saying? What are you saying then? Huh? No, you don't. You don't. No, people <laughs> no, don't. don't people. A lot of people wouldn't no, even you, know that. You would have mentioned. You know what? You're right. You're just right. I know you. That's yeah, why. Even to this day, yeah. Some people. I remember. I'm, I remember. Um, even even up until now, some guys say or people say, Wayne, you see your daughter a lot, don't you? You see her a lot, don't you? Like, no, I got a full time. Like, is it? Right. You know what I mean? People are surprised, yeah. Could yeah. they could they just assume that I see her a lot, but give her back to her mum? Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? But no. Yeah. So you're right. People are some people are surprised that um, I've got a full time. Yeah. So we're gonna go into the penultimate round. Okay, so penultimate round. What's yeah, that about? A then, series man? of questions, um, and you just give an answer. I'll try be, my best, man. Be prepared. Be prepared. So here we go. Hit no, that too bell. Too controversial now. Mm, yeah, no, 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 no. It kind of is. Hit the bell. <laughs> ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> so, red corner or blue corner? <laughs> it's 
Chicken, what the? <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> Red. Left hook or straight right? Left hook. Everlast or fly for glove brands? Everlast. Cleo Rays or Grants? Cleo Rays. Yeah. Rival or winning? Winning. For boots, Nike or Adidas? Adidas. Yeah. Everlast or Lonsdale for boots? Everlast. York Hall or Elephant and Castle? York Hall. O2 Arena or Wembley Arena? O2 Arena. Tupac or Biggie? Oh. One more answer, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No, you was a biggie, man. Biggie, raw. Yeah, trust you. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm surprised because you always one. used to say, yeah, I look like Tupac. I look like Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I look like him, yeah, but... Um, no, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls, his, his voice, his, he, he, he was a one-off. Yeah. Nas or Jay-Z? Both of them are great. Oh. Nas or Jay-Z, sorry. Nas. Mm. Ali or Tyson? Clay. Ali. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call him Clay, he gets mad. <laughs> see, see what he done to him? Yeah, yeah. Bye, man. Uh, Jack Johnson or Joe Lewis? Joe Lewis. Ray Robinson or Ray Leonard? Ray Robinson. Jimmy Lennon Jr. or Michael Buffer? Jimmy Lennon Jr. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people are picking him, you know. Mm. Because it, it, I, I don't know, is that Floyd era, man? Yeah. Um, Mills Lane or Steve Willis for referees? Mills Lane. Uh, who do you think will win these fights? Baturbiev or Bivol? Bivol. Um, Devin Haney or Regis Prograce? Next. Yeah, sweet. Devin Sorry, Haney. Yeah. Canelo or David Benavides? Benavides. Fury or Usyk? Fury. AJ or Wilder? Wilder. Uh, Joshua Boazzi or Dan Aziz? Oh. Drew. Oh, that's a good, good answer. <laughs> um, one second. So, yeah. BMW or Mercedes? BMW. Audi or Lexus? Lexus. Rolls Royce or Bentley? Bentley. For the gallium. Dark skin or light skin? <laughs> dark, dark skin or light skin? Dark skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Next question. <laughs> Looks or personality? Looks. Slim line or curvy <laughs> thick? Size 12. Mm, so that's, that's curvy. <laughs> yeah, curvy, yeah. So for music, garage or house? Garage. Drum and bass or jungle? Jungle. Similar. Mm. Nah, it's not sim- it's it's similar, but it's not similar. Kind of similar. Jungle, though. yeah. Jungle N- 90s, 90s. Yeah, 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 that's like, yeah, yeah. You know, telepathy, roast. That's it. You know, come on. R&B or hip hop? <sighs> hip hop. Dance hall or Afro beats? Dance hall. Um, curry goat or oxtail? Curry goat. Rice and peas or jollof? Rice and peas. Um, da, 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 da. Where we going? Where we going? Where we going? Ray and nephew or Appletons? Ray and nephew. Um, Evian or Volvic? Volvic. Voss or Fiji? Fiji. Lucas Aid Sport or Wild Hydrate? Lucas Aid Sport. <laughs> Nando's or Roosters? Roosters. Right. Okay. Um, we're going to get we've got uh, some special ends ones for you now. Okay. So, Granaries or Q Club? Granaries. Blue Orchard or Brannigan's? Blue Orchid, is it? Yeah, Blue Orchid. We used to call it Blue School Kid. Oh, yeah. is it? Or, what's the other one? Brannigan's. Brannigan's? Mm. Probably Blue Orchid, though, isn't it? Blue Orchid. Blue Orchid. Sinatra's or Loot Bar? Sinatra's. Okay. Uh, back to here. Do, 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 do. All right. 
Would you rather live in East Croydon, West Croydon, or South Croydon? Boy. South Croydon. That's a one off. Um, now, South Croydon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you prefer city life or countryside life? Do I prefer? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Countryside life. The quieter life. Yeah. Okay. So who's better looking, Beyonce or Alicia Keys? Wow. He's better looking. Yeah. Just looks. Yeah. You want to say? Ashanti or Mariah Carey? Ashanti. Ashanti. Megan Good or Halle Berry? Megan Good. Megan Good. He's been good. Actress. Mm. <laughs> Halle Berry. She, she oh. was in that, you know, 50 Cent's 21 Questions. I know you remember that. Okay, yeah. vaguely, vaguely. And last but not least, who's better looking? Wayne Alexander or Danny Glover. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Take a yeah, look. Come on, man. It's, it, you know what comment on guys looks out here, man. No, sir, in the comment section. No, it's going to run a joke from that one. Girls, take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. So, yeah, that's the end of the penultimate round. But no, thank you for coming on and um, sharing your story and journey. Um, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Okay. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram. Wayne Alexander the Great. I'm on Twitter at Wayne Boxing, capital B. And I'm on Facebook under my name, Wayne Alexander. Yes. And then also, we do a question from the last guest to the current guest. So the last guest was uh, okay. He, he's asked if you could make one fight today, oh. what would it be? Well, well, well. One fight today. Um, blimey, blimey, blimey. Was that yeah. past or present, or Sorry? it has to be active fighters? Um, either, mm. either fantasy or no, just yeah, one fight today, currently, mm. currently. That fighters are around today. Yeah, mm. that you that yeah that, that, you that you're see. clamoring for, that you want to see. Yeah, just you'd get it signed um, today. What's the fight you've been itching to see? And it's just non-existent in the negotiations. I'd have to say um, Berbatev and Bivol. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. All right. So there you have it, guys. That's another episode of The Neutral Corner. Mm. Shout out to the drink sponsor, Ragatonic. Make sure that you go onto ragatonic.com and use the 10% code Ragamus, and you get 10% off. Big and big up to the show sponsor, Treasure Boxing Club, Ashley Fearfane, each and every time. And yes, there we have it. It's another episode of the Neutral Corner. It's Danny Glover, the master aficionado. It's Big Lex. And today, we've been joined today by none other than the former British, European, and WBU champion. Hold the belts up, champ. Let's go, Hold champ. The belts up. Hold the belts up, champ. It's Wayne. Alexander <laughs> the Great. So we get a clap. Respect. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank you. And remember, persistence beats resistance. You know where it is. <laughs>